From the days of Jesse James of the Wild West to the present internet age, banks have been the target of outlaws who fantasize about a life of never having to work again. Unfortunately, pulling a bank heist is not as easy as it appears in Hollywood movies. With modern technology and advanced investigation techniques, an overwhelming majority of the criminals only make off with a few thousand dollars and eventually end up behind bars. However, this episode narrates the events surrounding 10 exceptional and carefully executed bank heists, which earned the perpetrators tens and, in some cases, hundreds of millions of dollars. Number 10. The Dunbar Armored Robbery On September 12, 1997, six men robbed the Dunbar Armored Facility on Mateo Street in downtown Los Angeles of 18.9 million US dollars, equivalent to $31 million in present-day value. The robbery was orchestrated by Alan Pace III, a former safety inspector of the company, who had been fired a few days prior for tampering with company vehicles. While on the job, Pace had photographed and studied the company's cash depot, especially the timing of the security cameras and how they could be avoided. He then printed a copy of the keys to the facility. He also knew that the vault was left open on Friday nights, due to considerable amounts of cash being moved. On the eve of the robbery, Pace recruited five of his childhood friends, Eric Boyd, Eugene Hill Jr., Freddie McRae Jr., Terry Brown Sr., and Thomas Johnson. The men assembled at a house party to plan the robbery, from where they proceeded to the facility and gained access using Pace's keys. Once inside, they ambushed the guards one by one as they took their lunch breaks at approximately 12.30 a.m. Within 30 minutes, the gang had loaded $18.9 million into a truck waiting outside, without firing a shot. In the investigations that ensued, the police were able to establish that it was an inside job and thoroughly interrogated Pace due to his recent firing, but could not find any evidence. Two years after the incident, Eugene Hill Jr., a gang member, gave a real estate broker stacks of cash bound together with the original currency straps. The real estate broker reported to the police, and Hill confessed to the crime and named all co-conspirators. Pace received a 24-year sentence, while the others were given 8-17-year to 17 -year sentences. Number 9. The United California Bank Heist On March 24, 1972, a professional burglar Emil Dincio and crew broke into the safe deposit vault at the United California Bank in Laguna Niguel and made away with $9 million, approximately $56 million in present-day value. Emil Dincio's crew members were James Dincio, his brother, who was an explosives expert and fabricator of burglary tools, Charles Mulligan, Dincio's brother-in-law, who was the driver and lookout man, Phil Christopher, an alarm expert, Harry and Ronald Barber, his nephews, and finally, Charles Brokel, an expert in petty thievery. The gang gained entry into the vault by blasting a hole in the reinforced concrete roof using dynamite prepared by James Dincio. After Phil Christopher had disarmed all of the alarms, the operation went smooth and clean. However, when the crew committed a similar crime in Ohio a few months later, the FBI was able to link the two burglaries. They tracked flight records of men traveling in groups to both cities around the date of the incidents and was able to locate a townhouse rented by one crew member. From there, recovered fingerprints were used to identify and arrest the offenders. Number 8. The Northern Bank Robbery with 95 branches, the Northern Bank was the largest retail bank in Northern Ireland and one of the four Irish banks permitted to print its own banknotes. On the night of Sunday, December 19, 2004, in Belfast, Northern Ireland, armed robbers disguised in police uniforms invaded the homes of two of the bank executives, Chris Ward and Kevin McMullen, and took their family members hostage. Ward was transported to McMullen's home while his parents and siblings were held hostage back at home. While at McMullen's home, the two bank employees were tied and thoroughly interrogated about the bank's security procedures. After a lengthy question and answer session, they were told they had a big day ahead of them and were ordered to get some sleep. At 6 a.m. the next day, Monday morning, Ward and McMullen were handed two mobile phones through which they would communicate with the robbers while the other hostages were moved to an unknown location. They were asked to go to work as usual, act as if everything was all right, and were reminded that any smart moves would cost the lives of their loved ones. 
While at work, Ward received the first call from the robbers, asking him to bring a bag containing one million pounds to a bus stop in the nearby Queen Street. This was regarded as a test run for the main robbery in the evening. After closing hours, Ward and McMullen stayed back at work as per the robbers' instructions. They were asked to open the bank vault and load crates of banknotes onto trolleys, taken to a van parked in front of the bank. The criminals stole a total of 26.5 million pounds, equivalent to 52 million US dollars on the date of the incident, and approximately 74 million US dollars in today's value. Thirteen people, including the two bank employees, were arrested in the investigations that ensued. Still, the cases were dropped due to lack of evidence. The stolen money was never recovered. Number 7. The Brinks Matt Robbery The Brinks Matt Robbery was Britain's most notorious bank heist. It was often referred to as the crime of the century. At around 6.40 a.m. on Saturday, November 26, 1983, six robbers led by Anthony Black broke into the company's warehouse at the London Heathrow Airport. Black worked as a security guard for Brinks Matt. He had the key to the main door and a mastery of the security system. Once inside, the criminals poured gasoline on warehouse employees and other security guards and threatened to set them ablaze if they did not provide the vault's combination numbers. The robbers had estimated to steal 3.2 million pounds in cash, but to their greatest surprise, they also found 3,000 kilograms of gold, large quantities of diamonds, and way more money than anticipated. The robbers wished the warehouse workers a Merry Christmas as they made away with cash, gold, and diamonds worth over 26 million pounds, equivalent to 41 million US dollars at the time of the incident, and approximately 95 million US dollars in today's value. Black was arrested in December 1983. He named co-conspirators Brian Robinson, Mickey McAvoy, Brian Perry, George Francis, and Kenneth Noy, and were all arrested and imprisoned. Number 6. The Banco Central Burglary In 2005, a carefully planned and perfectly executed heist at the Banco Central branch in Fortaleza, Brazil, entered the Guinness Book of Records as the biggest bank robbery in history. To pull it off, a gang of 25 members, allegedly headed by Luis Fernando Ribeiro, rented a commercial property around the city center and set up a fake landscaping business. The men spent three months digging a 256-foot tunnel from their office building to the bank. When neighbors saw van loads of soil being removed daily, they had no reason to suspect because that is a typical activity of a landscaping business. On Saturday, August 6, 2005, the tunnel had reached the vault area of the bank. Once inside, the men broke through 3.6 feet of steel-reinforced concrete to penetrate the vault. They loaded five containers of 50 real banknotes, amounting to 164,755,150 Brazilian reals equivalent to 71.6 million US dollars on the date of the incidents, approximately 99 million US dollars in present-day value. In the aftermath of the robbery, the Brazilian Federal Police launched a series of raids and investigations. Of the 25 people thought to be involved, only 8 were arrested, and about 10% of the stolen money was recovered. Number 5. The Securitas Depot Robbery The success of the Northern Bank robbery, which occurred in December 2004 in Belfast, Northern Ireland, appears to have highly inspired another group of criminals who lived in the southeastern part of the British Isles. Around 6.30 p.m. on February 21, 2006, just two years after the Northern Bank robbery, a criminal gang abducted the manager of a Securitas Depot, Colin Dixon, while returning home from work in his Nissan Almera on the A249 road in Kent, England. The criminals disguised as police officers, using a car with flashing blue lights, pulled Dixon over, placed him in handcuffs, and asked him to get in their vehicle. At the same time, Dixon's wife and eight-year-old son were being taken hostage at their home after they answered the door to two gang members, disguised in police uniform, and who claimed Dixon had been involved in a car accident. Around 1 o'clock a.m. the following morning, Dixon, his wife, and their son were taken to a Securitas Depot in Tonbridge, where the gang members, armed with AK-47 assault rifles and Scorpion submachine guns, forced the depot staff to open the gates and vault. Dixon and family, 
together with 14 employees, were locked in cash cages, while the gang members loaded a 7.5-ton Renault truck with banknotes amounting to £53,116,760, leaving behind another £154 million that would not fit in the truck. The amount stolen was equivalent to 93 million US dollars using February 2006 exchange rates and approximately 125 million US dollars in present day value. Securitas offered a 2 million pound reward for any information that would result in the arrest of the perpetrators, which was the biggest reward ever offered in UK history. In the week following the robbery, most of the vehicles used during the operation were found, one containing banknotes amounting to 1.3 million pounds. Lee Murray, the alleged mastermind of the heist, Emir Heisenaj, an inside man, and three others were arrested, convicted, and given significant prison sentences. Till today, less than 40% of the stolen money has been recovered. Number 4. The Knightsbridge Vault Robbery Though one of the biggest heists in UK history, the execution of this operation was unbelievably simple. The operation was masterminded by Valerio Visei, an Italian playboy and career criminal who had fled to London from his native Italy, where he was wanted for over 50 bank robberies. On July 12, 1987, Visei and another co-conspirator entered the Knightsbridge Safe Deposit Center and asked to rent a safe deposit box. After being taken to the vault area, the men drew their guns and subdued all the employees and security guards. To avoid customer interference, the thieves hung a sign on the door that the center was temporarily closed while letting in their accomplices. They carefully opened many of the safe deposit boxes and made away with cash, jewelry, and precious stones worth about 60 million pounds, equivalent to 97 million US dollars at the time of the incident and approximately 230 million dollars in today's money. In the aftermath of the event, the British police carried out a series of raids that led to the arrest of some of the robbers, but Visei had long fled to South America. A few months later, Visei was arrested when he returned to the UK to retrieve and ship his Ferrari Testarossa to South America. He spent five years in the Parkhurst prison on the Isle of Wight, after which he was deported to Italy to complete his 22-year sentence. Number 3. The British Bank of the Middle East Robbery – $235 $235 million After nine months of conflict between the Christian phalangist media and their Muslim enemies, the city of Beirut was divided into a Muslim West and a Christian East. Right in the middle was a deserted no-man's land on which lay the city's financial district. In January 1976, taking advantage of the chaos, eight heavily armed men, Dressed in military uniforms and carrying M16 assault rifles and M203 40mm grenade launchers, launched a full frontal attack on the Bab Idris branch of the British Bank of the Middle East in Beirut, Lebanon. They blasted their way into the lobby and shattered the windows and furniture, and ripped off electric pipes and cables with volley after volley of mortar rounds fired. Within minutes, the bank was entirely under their control. They blasted open the vault using massive explosions that shook the bank building as several other explosives detonated. As the dense smoke cleared, the gang slowly loaded three trucks with gold bullion, cash, and a variety of shares, bonds, and stock certificates worth over 50 million US dollars at the time, over 235 million dollars in present day value, after which the men disappeared. The whole operation lasted over four hours and was the biggest bank robbery in history at the time. The robber's identity still remains a mystery to this day. No one has ever been charged and not even a penny was ever recovered. The Sicilian Mafia, the Russian Mafia, the Israeli Secret Service, Yasser Arafat's Force 17, the Christian Phalanges Militia, and the Islamic Militia have all been accused of staging the heist. Number 2 the Dar es Salaam Investment Bank Robbery Even though the Dar es Salaam heist has received very little media coverage, it remains one of the biggest bank heists in history. On Wednesday, July 11, 2007, employees of the Dar es Salaam Investment Bank in Baghdad's Karata district arrived for work only to find the doors and the vault wide open and all the money gone. Unlike the other robberies on this list, there was no need for the police to look far as the three men who stood guard at the bank the night before were nowhere to be found. 
The amount stolen was 282 million US dollars, approximately 367 million US dollars in today's money. And the question as to why a private bank would keep such an amount in US dollars rather than local currency remains unanswered. Though it was highly speculated that the robbers got help from local militias to be able to move such an amount of money out of the city, it is also possible that the men simply took advantage of the ongoing chaos in the country at the time. Just to give a glimpse of the utter carnage in Baghdad at the time, it was reported that 18 people not connected to the robbery were murdered in the city on the day of the heist. Nobody was ever arrested in relation to the robbery, and the money was never recovered. Number 1. The Iraqi Central Bank Robbery The biggest bank robbery in history took place in broad daylight with the use of a simple handwritten note. No guns were fired, no intimidation involved, and no masks worn. On March 18, 2003, just one day to the outbreak of the war in Iraq, a small group of men, headed by Qusay Hussein, the son of the Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein, landed at the Central Bank of Iraq with a handwritten note, supposedly written by the president, asking to withdraw 920 million US dollars to keep it from enemy hands. The bank manager believed them. After bank employees loaded the money into three large trucks parked outside the bank, the men drove away to an unknown destination. Following the US invasion of Iraq, at least half of the cash was recovered in the ensuing raids on Saddam Hussein's palaces. However, it is reported that some of the US servicemen involved in the raid made off with chunks of cash for themselves and their families. Even in nominal terms, the Iraqi central bank robbery remains the biggest bank heist in history. The 1.3 billion US dollar present day value of the heist dwarfs all other robberies the world has ever known. Thank you for watching. If you have a video idea, why not leave a comment below? And if we make it, we'll give you a big shout out. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell for more videos on crime stories, notorious outlaws, and historical scandals.